and the honor. Hallelujah. The Bible says that everything has breath. Do you have breath in your body? So that means we can praise the Lord with our breath this morning, our hands and our voice. Oh, yeah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Won't you take a moment here this morning, go out across the aisle and greet somebody and let them know you're glad they're here today. Amen. Will you do that?
Well, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. We want to welcome you today. Listen, don't move in with them. Just go visit them. Say hello. Good to have you in. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. We want to welcome those that are watching by the web on our faith channel. It's good to have them with us today as well. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord today, and we just give God the praise and the honor and the glory. And we just want to, I just want to say right here, I appreciate all of you that uh, work diligently. How many saw the parade last night? Amen. They worked, the folks that worked on that yesterday worked hard and uh, part of that. And, and we're just glad that we were able to be a part of the community. Amen. You ready to worship the Lord a while this morning? I am. I don't know about you. The word of the Lord says we come into the house of the Lord with joyfulness. Amen. So you give us a big smile this morning and be joyful in the Lord because the Lord is here and he's here to minister to you. But I'm telling you, I come expecting a miracle sign and wonder today. Amen. Father, we thank you, God, for your power, your anointing. Lord, we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. And I thank you, Father, today for what you're going to do in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's worship him a while this morning. My life. 
fight for you. Yeah, we sure I'll never let you go. All I do, I do anything for you. Everything is in your hands. So I get up, get up and praise you.
See it, your prayer.
Say his name, Jesus. Oh, we glorify you, Jesus. We glorify, we glorify, we glorify you. Oh, don't miss your opportunity. Oh, we glorify, oh, we glorify you, Jesus. in right here, right here, right here, right now. Come on, press in. Oh, like the woman with the issue of blood, Father, Lord, we press into your presence for more of your glory, Father, for more of you, Jesus. Whatever you need, he's in the house. Whatever you need, come on, ask him right here, right here, right here, right now. We ask you, Lord. We ask you for your strength, Lord. We ask you for your power, God. Lord, we ask you, we ask you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, thank you for your precious presence, God. For your glory that's in this house. Come on, let's set that atmosphere. Set the atmosphere for miracles in this house today. Come on, open your hearts. Let your worship come. That's how you change the atmosphere. For whatever you need of the Lord today. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Come on, let's take a few moments right here. Just open your hearts to Him. Let your worship go up to Him. Set the atmosphere for miracles, signs, and wonders. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord God. Oh, we come into this place. We come into this place for one reason. To lift up the name of the Lord. To give worship to Him in our corporate time of worship. 
that lives and minds and bodies will be changed, but also the spirit man will be strengthened to carry on. Father, we thank you, God, for your presence, oh God. We thank you for your presence, oh God. Would you just one more time lift those hands to the heavens and say, I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this, for your presence today. Holy Spirit, say this with me. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you in this place. Come on, just begin to worship him in tongues. There's a breaking going on, church. How long has it been? Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Oh, In this series I'm teaching you on right now, on the change in the atmosphere, this is what's happening. Don't stop playing where you are. The, the thing is, you've got to participate. You have to participate. If you're saying inside of you, your flesh is saying, no, I don't have to participate, well, you're in the wrong place. Because I'm telling you, we're going to have the presence of God here. Come on, one more time. Just give the Lord a praise. Father, we worship you, Lord. Oh, Ramade, Asundalabamaya, Sundalamaya. Oh, we worship you, oh God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We worship you, oh God. <laughs> Woo! Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. We worship you, oh God. Listen, the stage is set. The atmosphere is here. Whatever you need of the Lord, just reach up and claim it right now. Reach up and claim what you need of the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just can't leave this place. Come boldly into the throne room of grace. Come on, step into that place with Him this morning. Oh, we worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. <laughs> Woo. Lord, I worship you, oh God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Come on, church. This is the time you appreciate. This is the time you receive of Him. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. God. Heavenly Father, we've come into this place for one purpose. Lord, I lift up this congregation to you today. Lord, as they worship Lord, as they worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, reach down in this room and do your work in their lives. We pray for those in the hospitals. We pray for those in the nursing homes. We pray for those that are shut in, those in the jailhouses, those in, a, in, in the prisons, oh God. We pray for them today. We lift them up to you today, Lord Jesus. Lord, we lift them up to you. We lift up Sam and Leona Lee today, Lord. I pray, God, that you will reach down and minister to them. We pray for Jack Cochran today, Lord. We continue to lift him up to you. Lord, every individual, every need that's in the house today, we worship you, O oh God. We worship you. We thank you, Lord. See, in the time of that atmospheric 
worship going on, that's when you put your petitions before the Lord. Come on, that's the time you say, Father, here I am. I need your touch today. If that's you, why don't you just lift your hand right there and say, Lord, I need your touch today. Oh, yes, Lord. Reach down in this room right now. Reach down in children's church, Lord, in the nursery, Lord. Let your power, let your presence come down in that room. Lord, we worship you, Lord. We pray for Dave today, Lord. We thank you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. We worship you, O oh God. We worship you, O oh Lord. We worship you, O oh God. Father, these two seniors need your touch today. Lord, we anoint their bodies. Lord, we pray, God, your healing virtue to flow into their bodies. Lord, we pray today, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we worship you, O Lord. Lord, I worship you, God. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but the presence of God is so strong in this room. I don't want to leave this place. I won't, don't want to leave right where we are. We worship you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. The Word of God says, Any believer shall lay on hands and they shall recover. If you need a healing in your body right now, why don't you just lay that hand on that area that you're, that you're having difficulties? Whatever it is, in the name of Jesus, right now, in the name of Jesus, I proclaim the healing virtue of the blood of Jesus Christ to flow into your body. I pray the healing power of God to move in this place. Oh, Namrende, Asandala, Mamaya, Lord, that there be healings right now, in the name of Jesus. Backs be healed, hearts be healed, minds be regulated lungs be healed oh pains that are that are there lord in jesus name now start testing that area start testing that area asking the lord to touch oh i'm telling you the power of the holy ghost is in this room he is here right now you're healing, oh God. You're healing, oh God. Your touch, oh God. This is all about you. It's not about us. It's all about you. To show your people that you are God. God, prove yourself to them today of your healing virtue blowing in this room. Lord, I worship you. I worship you, O oh God. I worship you, O oh God. I worship you, O oh Lord. I worship you. I thank you, O oh God. Take your neighbor's hand. If you feel comfortable to do so, take your neighbor's hand. Come here, Ty. Come take my hand. Father, we come into agreement as a body that every physical need every financial need, every emotional need of every family that's here in the sanctuary and those that are at home today, extended families, oh God. Lord, I, my heart's been burdened. My heart's been weighty for many. And Lord, I lift this congregation. I lift the extended families. I lift those that are not here today. I lift them all up to you, Lord. God, wherever they are, whatever decisions they're making, Lord, let it be in thy divine kingdom will. Thy kingdom come, thy will will be done. If we will follow in the direction of the path of the kingdom of God, everything will come in order in our lives. 
everything will come into place in our lives. And Father, tonight, today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I call those things that be not as though they are. I take authority over every evil spirit that will try to come against the children, that will try to to come against the teenagers, everything that will try to come against the family. And in the name of Jesus, we proclaim the Word of God over this house, over every extended family, over every person not here today, over every family present today. And Lord, every ministry, oh, Rabbi Nehemiah, over every ministry, over every area that we have the the, 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 the place to touch our, our, our influence oh God God we ask you Lord to anoint it we ask you Lord to make provision for it oh Lord I thank you God for your power I thank you God for your anointing that's in this place that's working through this house and God let it expand let it explode across this community let it explode across the airway and Father right now not by my nor by power but by your spirit and you said in your word amen and that's the way it is hallelujah 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 Hallelujah. come on shout unto the Lord this morning hallelujah see when the atmosphere is set anything can happen your faith is increased hallelujah don't you just feel that power of the Holy Spirit? I do. I'm feeling that anointment. I'm feeling that anointing blowing in this place. Woo, anything could happen. Hallelujah. Creative miracles could happen right now. Bones could be created. New blood. Somebody's getting a transfusion. Woo. Somebody's getting a transfusion right now in your blood. He shunned all of Whoa, yes, Holy Spirit. Somebody's getting a new heart. Woo! Somebody's getting some kidneys in this house. If we believe by faith, I'm telling you, God is moving in this place. He's taking care of that regeneration of the spines that's been injured. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? Ora my Messiah. He's even moving in the heart, the hurts and the hearts that God is going to mend those relationships in your life. Woo! Ora my Messiah. Healing in the stomachs. I'm just calling for what God, the Holy Spirit's having me to say this morning. When you say, Pastor, this is Sunday morning. We're just supposed to have church and go home. No, we don't do that around here. I want what God wants. Teenagers are rising up to be men and women of God. Hallelujah. 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 One more time, would you just lift your hands and say, Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Oh, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. We worship you, O oh God. Lord, we pray for our nation. Lord, that your people humble themselves before you and turn from their wicked ways. <laughs> that this land would be healed. that the sins would be forgiven that, your, that the prayers that are made in the church houses in America will be heard Lord let your people in this nation let your people in this nation oh God weep before you weep for those babies that were, that's been aborted Weep for the children that have been abused. Weep for the teenagers that are strung out on drugs and alcohol, God. Let the church weep before you, O oh God. Lord, let the church weep for the, the abused wives, the abused husbands. Let the church weep for the marriages, O oh God. The marriages of 
man and woman what it should be. Lord, in America, Lord, today, let your church today, we bow before you. We bow before you, Father. Let your heart weep this morning for lost souls. Many of you here today, you have lost loved ones. But there are souls that are in the balance in your own community. Joel 3 says there's multitudes and multitudes in the day of decision. And it's up to the church to go to them, go get them. Lord, we pray for those souls. We pray for the harvest. We pray you there for the Lord of the harvest that you send for labors in this harvest. Lord, they're here. Send them from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. Pray in the resources, Father God. We pray in the resources from the north, the south, and the east, and the west to accomplish your word. Accomplish what you're going to do, Father God. Because your word will accomplish it. And we proclaim your word, oh God. We proclaim your word today, oh God. We worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Father, for your presence. Woo! You can be seated if you want to. Hallelujah. Well, there's a weeping spirit in the house. See, when you worship, you pray, then the Holy Spirit tenders your heart. He takes the heart of stone, the hardness that we don't realize that's there sometimes. And we say, Lord, help me to weep before you, to come in that place of compassion. Come in that place of compassion that he has for his kingdom. Amen? Woo, I feel like I've already been in church. Isn't that awesome? I know we've already led our prayers, but there's some prayers. Looks like it's come here. Mary and May Justice needs prayer today. Sister Myra and, and um, Steve Hodges is in real, has been, excuse me, Steve Hodges was in the hospital this last week, had surgery. He's doing much better, doing at home. But Sister Myra and her son is sick at home today with a, some type of flu virus. And she called me this morning, had prayer with her on the phone. And she... Um, Ex expressed asked you to pray for her but she said don't come by she don't want you to catch it but I'm asking you to and um, also we received a phone call last night my grandson Trey was put in the hospital with walking pneumonia they're going to keep him overnight and so pray for him they're going to keep him longer he's got some type of bacteria in his lungs alright I didn't get that report this morning so we need to pray for Trey. Isn't God good? Sam and Leona need, Lee needs our prayers. She has not been able to get out much recently. And we just ask the Lord to minister to them. My God is good, isn't he? Woo. Father, we lift up Sister Myra this morning. Lord, she's a faithful woman of God. We pray for her son as well. We pray for George Bigelow. We pray for Jack Cochran. We pray for Steve Hodges. We pray for Mark and May Justice, Lord. God, you did a miracle in that for that boy this week. And God, we ask you to move in their life. We lift up Trey this morning. God, I know your shape of reached out in the hospital. We take authority over this bacteria in his lungs. And we ask you in Jesus' name to do mighty works among your people. Sam and Leona lead today. Lord, we worship you, God. Isn't God good? Whew. How do you come out of that one? I don't know about you, but there's a presence of the Lord in this place this morning. And He is here to minister to you and strengthen you today. Amen? You love the Lord? Look over to your neighbor and tell them they're looking good. Yes, I think you're looking good. Is that what you're wearing? 
Sister Tyler just reminded me. Uh, how many of us here on the Sunday night when Pastor Mike Sloan brought Kevin uh, White over with us and he had his associate with him, Neil Smith? You remember Neil? He got up and testified. And he had preached here a couple of years ago. Um, he had a stroke about three days ago. And he passed away uh, Friday night. And uh, we need to hold Neil Smith's family and also the uh, Oasis International Church of God over in Jeffrey Hills. He was working there with them. Hold them up in prayer today. And Lord, we lift up Neil's wife and his, his children. And Lord, we lift up Pastor Mike Sloan and his congregation today. Lord, this is a great loss for this family, great loss for this church. And Lord, we lift them up to you today. And we give you the praise and honor and glory. You never know when your time is going to be. That's the reason why that we need to be ready at all times. Amen? There's a clipboard that's going to be passed. And as we pray today, and let me stop there. Let me, let's me let pray today. I want to pray for Sister Betty. She is not feeling well. She's not been feeling well for several uh, days in the last week. And I want us to have special prayer for her right now. Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, to reach down and minister to Betty Steiner. Father God, I know that you're able. She is your faithful servant. We ask you, Lord, today to reach down in her home today and minister to her and strengthen her body. And I'm asking you, Lord, to, to move into every situation. And, Lord, we lift up her family to you as well in this season and this hour. Lord, she is your child and she is your faithful servant. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a clipboard that's going to be coming by. Sometime it gets about halfway through. The purpose of that is just to keep up uh, who's here, but also any changes of address and phone numbers that you have. Because a lot of times when we do mail outs, we get return mails. So we want to, you to do that. I want our ushers and uh, is going to be helping me this morning. If you'll go ahead and get in place. Adio. Adiel is going to work with us today. You're fixing to be handed something, and I'm asking you to everyone to take one. The Lord has blessed you, Faith Temple family, and, and a lot of our families are not here today for whatever reason. The Lord has blessed you, but the first Sunday of every month, we're going to begin to in a different way. How many want your life, excuse me, your family, personally to be out of debt? Come on. How many want to see the deadness of this body gone? So what we have to do is we're beginning something fresh and new. We're not doing away with our 40, 50s, but every month we're going to have debt free Sunday it's going to be the first Sunday we're going to start believing I want us to start servicing the debt amen because I can tell you this in ministry or any business debt is not always a bad thing okay because if you're growing you've got to have something see the thing is I don't know if you were or not we, two weeks ago we had Harvest Sunday which we had 170 people packed. I do not know where we parked all the cars. If it wasn't for good neighbors that lives around us, they would not They would uh, not let us use their properties. We're in the process of negotiating with the property owner across the corner about uh, the city's got to approve it to, to make that a parking, a grass parking lot. It has to be designed in a certain way. And negotiating with him because he's not going to just let us have it we're going to have to rent it but only when we have a special needs or a monthly and we're 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 at a place and you say and you have to understand and i was sitting here this morning the holy spirit gave me peace about it. i looked out here i saw the amount of people wasn't here but the thing is whether you know it or not this church in a week's time ministers to probably 150 200 people in a week's time you follow me Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, in between different events, different times. Next Sunday you come, there'll be different people here, you know what I'm saying? So the thing is, 
we want to see the church get to the point and I've already got the pictures and I'm walking on land and asking God for it amen and we're going to be talking to you about that the first of the year but I want you to believe for God to do a miracle amen and how he's going to do a miracle he's going to do the miracle through his people amen so I want our ushers this morning, they're going to just pass them down the aisle. It's, it's not a point you saying yes or no, they're just going to hand them to you and you do what you want to do with them. But I want you this morning, ushers, go ahead and start passing them out if you would. Just take, this, take them, pass them down the aisle. Everybody, everybody take one. And I want you to take hold of this and we're going to pray over this. And we're going to believe for a miracle of God. Amen. We're going to believe for a miracle of God, what He's going to do. You say, well, I'm already doing my part. Listen, just, just flow with your pastor this morning, all right? You're already doing. I know you. some of you are doing. Faithfully giving in the 4050. I know that. But I'm asking you this morning, I want us to take that envelope, and I want you to come into a full agreement this morning. Ushers, when they got them, if they have them, you just come and back to your seats and be fine if everybody's got one. I want you to take it in your hand. Here's just a time. See, I even give my wife one. <laughs> I want you to come into agreement with me. Every month, you say, Pastor, I'm going to trust God. And see, he may, see, when you, when you do a faith commitment, a faith commitment, this has nothing to do with your tithing. When you do a faith commitment, say, Pastor, I'm going to come into agreement with you every month. I'm going to believe that God is going to make a way that I can put $50 in this envelope. Every month. Do what? It can be creative. See, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, Ty and I had planted a seed and we were asking for uh a particular area to be taken care of we planted a seed it was similar to what I'm asking you today it was a $50 seed that we had planted in, into a ministry and I wrote the check out and gave it to the ministry where I was at and when I come back and I was sitting at my computer looking in my account all of a sudden that, my, that check that I wrote out popped up and it came out my phone rang, literally. I got a phone call from my State Farm agent, one of his staff there, and says, Pastor, we need you to come by and sign some paper. We have a check for you. I said, for what? They said, for 300 and something dollars. It was something that, that had, uh, it was dealing with a policy that we had. It was just money sitting there. They didn't, they didn't know about it, and they fixed it. And she wants you to come by and take care of that. See, unbeknowing to all that situation, that very day we had a 300 and something dollar bill that needed to be paid right then. See, when we faithfully do something, we by faith, sometimes a seed faith. You know, I, I know some people get critical about the seed faith, but I believe in giving. I believe in believing by faith. So I'm asking you to take this in your hand. If you can do it today, you can put that in that envelope, or if you've already got yours, just attach it to your tithe envelope or whatever and turn it in. But I, I want you to be faithful. But I want you to believe God with me for the greater work. Amen? I believe and I know that I know that I know that we're on a, this is that stepping stone to the blessings of God. Amen? I don't want to stretch this, this note out this long. I want to believe it can be taken care of in 20, by the end of 2013, be, be paid off. Amen? And we'd be in the process of relocating. Amen? And I believe that God's got a plan and got a purpose. I'm going to pray this prayer, and this is Ty's coming to share something with you. Father God, we come together this morning as a body. We praise our hands, and I want your faith to be strong with me, church. It is impossible to please God without faith. I want you this morning to agree with me. Father God, we come into agreement that every single month that this commitment is going to be taken care of. There's going to be families that are going to believe it. They're going to have creative. Their mind is going to change. Their, their, their thought processes are going to change. They're not going to think about what's in their account. They're going to believe that you're going to fill this envelope. 
And they're going to send it in, or they're going to drop it by. They're going to bring it to church with them. And, Father God, we ask you in Jesus' name, as they plan to do what you're called to do in their hearts, you do it, Father, in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. Now, here's, here's, a, here's a plan I want to give you. Basically, if you think about it, there's four weeks in a month. You just take that 50, divide it by four. You're only talking about 12 or $13 a week. You'll spend that going through McDonald's. Come on, are you hearing me? Unless you get the dollar menu. <laughs> you will not go to a restaurant and sit down and eat a decent meal for walking out of there. You will, you will spend. I, I stopped the other day after uh, I, had, I hadn't eaten for over uh, eight, 15 hours because of a blood test they was doing. And the thing is, I stopped and ate, and I was just going to get a simple meal. Before I left there, I, was, I, was, I had to spend $15 just to eat. Because I wanted a good meal. But the thing is, it wasn't that much. It started out low. But the time they get through with it, sounds like the gas pump. You know what I'm saying? But I want to encourage you in this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I want this recorded, if you don't mind. Let me come to you. I know you don't. I just want to say you cannot outgive God. Since we've moved back over here, there's been a couple of times in my mind it's thought, did I make the right decision? And I know I did, but this, you know, sometimes that gets in your mind, you know, because it's been kind of a two places, you know, you're trying to deal with. And I'm gonna tell you something right now, it's still been faithful to God since we've been back here. My husband received some back pay, not much, but it's enough to carry us another month or so through VA that they should have gave him a long time ago. And I went into the community. I did not know. We didn't get a letter. We didn't get anything. I just popped up the computer checking our account. I do this every day to make sure everything's fine. And there the money was. He was still asleep. And I got excited. <laughs> and then as I read on down it, we had another check for another good amount from Social Security where they didn't give him as a raise. I guess I don't know how many years back. But they gave him that. All of this came in one week. You know, when you don't have gas money to go anywhere, and something like that pops up, you sit at home because you know you've got to get to church. I'm not saying I don't have anything, but God has blessed us, and I want you guys to know He has blessed us tremendously through help, through our children. Even though they get mad at you, don't speak to you for a while, they steal your children, Amen. and you still love them, Amen. and you still claim them for God. Amen. And your finances, you've got to do the same thing. we got to trust God. And that has brought us through a lot of times. Many years ago, this woman right here didn't even know that she blessed us one day on a, on a birthday or an anniversary or something when my husband first got hurt. We needed $50 to make a light bill years ago in 94. And I was the only one working, and my husband was down and out and had first got hurt with his back. We needed $50 to finish it out because I made the house payment and all this other stuff. God sent her over to my house, and I'm not just patting her on the back, but I thank her for answering God's prayer because she didn't know. She did not know anything. But she brought me a, Chris, a birthday card or either an anniversary card, I don't remember. And I opened it up, and it was a $50 bill. The lady was going to turn my electorate off the next week. But I never told a soul, but I knew God was going to answer. And every time my husband had to go to the doctor, if we didn't have the money to put in the car, somebody would come by and give us 10 or 15 or $20. You know, when you trust God, he will answer prayer. Amen. And I know I'm at the right place. Amen. Woo, are you at the right place? <laughs> Hallelujah. I want our sister Ty's coming to share something with you. We're at the right place. Amen. How many of you are in covenant relationship with God this morning? I am so proud that he calls me friend, that he allows me to be in partnership with him. And you know, when you're in partnership with somebody, that, that means you help share in the finances, amen? If you're in a partnership, if Araceli and I had a business together, we'd both be given. We'd both, you know, have our funds tied up in it. But this morning, I'm thankful that actually this is a part of worship. 
Do you know that? This is a part of worship. It's just not a matter of me bringing money and just, you know, throwing it in the plate. But it's an act of my worship because it comes from my heart. It comes from that place where and you've heard me say many, many times, you know, I worked hard for this money, you know. And I am so thankful that I, ha I don't have to come before God empty handed. And it's not always about money. If you don't have money to bring, if you don't have an income, your prayers, just your act of service. You know, even the, the cute little video we were watching in the beginning, you know, where the lady was so glad to lower herself down to the level of being a servant. Well, you know what? My response to that is I'm, I'm glad I'm able to reach up to that level to be a servant, just a servant in God's house. Amen. Because, you know, he loves us so much. And, you know, this morning, I'm, I'm believing God for a healing in my body. And I get up and I say my scripture confessions over my body and believing that God is going to heal. But what touches my heart more than anything is the word says that that same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead resides on the inside of me. Amen. Have you thought about that? What a powerful statement to know that the same spirit resides in us. When we accepted him, when we became saved, we have everything we need on the inside of us if we allow the Holy Spirit to use it. That's coming into covenant relationship with the Lord. Understanding what comes along with salvation. Understanding that we have the grace. You know, when there's areas I struggle in in, in in a day that has just been like a revelation to me lately, you know, I'll just pray and I'll say, thank you, Lord, that I have grace on the inside of me to accomplish this. It's his grace. It's his covenant relationship with me that allows me to get through that day. That allows me to praise him right on through the struggles and the trials. Because we all have them. We're going to have them as long as we live in this body. Amen. We are going to have them. And you know, I was thinking and praying this morning for Pastor Mike and their congregation. It's always a hard thing when you lose one in, in, in your body. Because we're a family. When you hurt, we hurt. When we hurt, you hurt. Amen? And I was just thinking about them this morning. But you know, heaven's rejoicing today because of Neil Smith being there. And the good part is, God knows. He's experienced it. He watched his son die. But see, the good thing is, when we're in covenant relationship with God, we know where they are. We know that we're going to see them again. That, you know, he's no longer going to have to suffer in this body. He's already made it. It's just our loss that we're sad for. But this morning, you know, my heart is rejoicing for him because he's, he's made that ultimate journey. Amen. Well, quickly, we just want to make our scripture declaration over our tithe. So if you've got yours, go ahead and grab it. I am a tither. I am a tither. The tithe is the Lord's. The tithe is the Lord's. And it's a privilege and honor to give him 10%. Of all, my income. of all my income. When I'm obedient to do so, then the windows of heaven are open to me, and they pour out overwhelming blessings of abundance. And they pour out overwhelming blessings of abundance. We got a right to go to that checking account and look for that help, don't we? Because I'm a tither, I'm a tither. God has promised to rebuke the devourer for my sake. Therefore, the devourer is rebuked in my life. The devourer is rebuked in my life. My possessions don't wear out as quickly as they used to. My possessions don't wear out as quickly as they used to. They last much longer than their normal life expectancy. They last much longer than their normal life expectancy. Even my vehicles last longer. Even my vehicles last longer. And run better. And run better. And my household appliances work better. And my household appliances work better. And longer than normal. Satan's strategies to steal, Satan's strategies to steal hinder, hinder, or stop my financial blessings, my financial blessings are, rendered are rendered null and void because of the principle of God's word. Do you get that? The it's word. the principle of God's word that renders that null. As I give my tithe, I, give my tithe, I, honor, the Lord, I honor the Lord and declare that my financial prosperity is independent of the world system. Doesn't matter what CNN and NBC News, see, it doesn't matter what they say. 
Amen. No matter what the economy does, no what the economy does my finances are blessed. Say it loud enough for the devil to hear you so he'll believe you. My Amen. Are no matter what the stock market does, my finances are blessed. No matter what the interest rates are, my finances are blessed. No matter what the price of gas is, God will supply all of my needs. Because I am faithful to honor God, He will honor me. He is faithful to bring abundance and prosperity to me. In Philippians 4.19, it says, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus because we are in covenant. Amen. Ushers, go ahead and get ready to receive. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, I thank you that we are able to be in your house. And I praise you, Father, because we are in covenant relationship with you. I thank you because of that covenant, Father, that we have the honor and the privilege to bring in part of our very life being what represents our blood, sweat, and tears, Father, that we are able to come in with a grateful heart and to bring this and to offer it, Father, at your altar this morning. We ask that you would take it, that you would bless it, that you would multiply it for the kingdom work, that souls can be reached and saved by our act of obedience. Now we're going to praise you and honor you for your word because you are not a man that you should lie. That, Father, everything written in your word is true and it's amen. And, Father, we just thank you and we praise you for that today in the powerful name of Jesus. As, he, as they're taking the offering, I had, um, if y'all don't mind, I'm just going to push this to the side. I'm going to sit back because I can talk to you. But I had, it's okay. If you want to come out, we'll move it back. I had the, the honor of having the week off, and the, the spirit of worship has always been with us because worship is our life. It's, that's what it should be. But he really dealt with me this week on worship. And he, and he took me back to where David, because David had the heart of worship, he was able to usher in the presence of God and to usher in. And that's what my, that's what my, my goal is, is to usher in the presence of God and to, to enter in, not only for myself, but for you, to open those heavenlies just enough where y'all can push it wide open and walk through. Amen. So that is my cry. And I came in, and yesterday I've been listening to this, this song. Um, it's by Carrie Job. Uh, I got the, the track. I've got... Um, I recorded it with my voice. I'm still, <laughs> I'm still warming up to being recorded because um, I love to worship, and it's not a show to me. It's not a, it's not a performance. You know, if you knew, in the last two weeks, my my <laughs> my jaw has locked three times. So out of three times, when I scream hallelujah, when I when I shout or when I jump. It's because that I can and because I'm free. You know, my mouth is open. My, my eyes are open. I can breathe. So with this, this song is called My Everything. So if you'll just worship with me.
can only see forever. Jesus, just one moment, I would say, thank you, that these days are worth tomorrow. Hallelujah. When you're determined, you can do what God wants you to do. You maybe go through some things and... Hallelujah. I want you to open your Bibles up with me to... Second Chronicles chapter 5. I'm going to pick up where I've left off this last weekend. I begin to teach you and preach to you about changing the atmosphere. And see, when you begin, I just love the working of the Holy Spirit. Um, When you begin to teach in a certain subject, He manifests. I remember years ago, I would teach on the anointing, and all of a sudden, the anointing just show up. Or He would show up before He even get there. Because He honors that. And... And I shared with you that, um, wasn't that an awesome song? That's what, see, the enemy wants to shut your mouth, but you're going to have to speak out, amen? Sing out. He wants to shut you up. See, that's the whole ploy that the enemy has is working in the world today especially in America he's wanting to shut the church up he's not going to shut the church up I pray for the man in the White House but he's not going to shut us up 
Amen? The clergy in America is rising up and they're speaking the, the truth of the Word of God. They can threaten us with everything they want to, but let me tell you what, they're, we got a greater lawyer than they got. Amen? And we got some Christian lawyers through the ACLU and all different Christian organizations that will come and defend us. But we're going to teach the truth of the Word of God. Amen? But in this time, and in, in, in what the Lord has been really addressing to us is the importance of that when we come to the house of God, and it, you know whether it's um, here or wherever, we choose to set the atmosphere. You chose this morning. Yes, the worship team and the presence of God and you know we led you somewhere. But the thing is, you had to choose that you was going to go there. Do you remember when you was a child, and some of you still like this, when, when you was asked to go somewhere or you was asked to do something or you was directed a certain way, you know, you didn't want to do it. You wanted to be stubborn and you wanted to do it your way. Some of you still like that. In pastoring, sometimes you still pastor sheep, baby sheep, all right? You ain't telling me what to do. It's not a point of that. It's the point of trying to lead you into somewhere. We want to lead you into the Holy of Holies. Can you just imagine? Can you just imagine when, that, when Jesus said, It is finished. They say that veil is about, was about four inches thick. Split from the top to the bottom. Hallelujah. And fell open where you and I would have the privilege to walk into the Holy of Holies. Where in centuries and years before, they wasn't allowed to. Only the high priest. And he had a rope around his ankle. If he wasn't living right, they had to drag him out. God struck him dead. I don't want to be struck dead. Thank God for grace. <laughs> but here's the thing. When that veil fell and the, the glory of God began to flow into the people's hearts, then they could come without any kind of physical sacrifice no more and, and all those things. And the same way with us today, we don't have to bring a, you thank God you don't have to bring a lamb and present it to, to us today. You don't have to bring a, you know, calf or an animal to bring and sacrifice. You, the ultimate sacrifice has already been done and all you have to do is say, Father, I thank you and I worship you. I come today and I'm asking you to take me into the Holy of Holies. That's what's happening. And see, when I began to share with you all this passage of scriptures in 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13, if you'll give me that, please. The word says, Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in the praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice, amen, lifted up their voice with the trumpets, and the cymbals and the instruments of music and praise the Lord saying for he is good say it with me for he is good for his mercy endures forever that the house say the house the that screen's not got it all sorry that the house was filled with a cloud even the house of the Lord so that the priest could not stand to minister by reason of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of God. I wanted to feel it so strong, I'd just get up here and get drunk. But I can walk in, I can be a, I can be a drunk preacher. You go out of here and tell somebody, well, our preacher's drunk. Some of you need that newness in your life, Amen. Hallelujah. I know what time it is. I'm very well of the time. I'm going to be conscious of that. Just give me a few moments. But out of this passage of Scripture, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I, hear, I, I hear the rain falling. Come on, I hear it. It's coming as a sound, as a mighty rushing wind. I hear something. Come on, do you hear it today? 
We felt it in this service today. See, as I shared with you last week, just give you a little uh, catch up to those that wasn't here. The atmosphere speaks of pervading or surrounding influence or spirit. The atmosphere is for us, so for us can be uh, 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 in a general environment or a mood or even a spirit, maybe even our own spirit. See, sometimes you set the atmosphere in your own house. Do you get up in the morning time? Do you set the atmosphere with aggravation and frustration and it just passes on to everybody in the house? Come on, are you hearing me? Get up happy. Maybe you don't go to bed, don't go to bed aggravated because you're going to get up aggravated. Don't come to church aggravated. Oh, pastor, don't go there. Come on down. How many of you ever got up in the Sunday morning and when you especially those of you who have children now and when they were younger, something would always go wrong. You'd have to have a, a little fuss. If the enemy's gonna do anything crazy, he's gonna do it on Sunday morning. Amen. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna try to pinch the little one and he'll start screaming and why didn't you pinch me? I didn't pinch you. And before long, you're all frustrated. But see, the thing is, you got to stop right there. I remember the atmosphere changed one time. I was, would go and the girls would come home from school when they were in public school. We lived over on South Night. Man, attitudes and all this kind of stuff come home with them. Buddy, I, I started when I'd pull up there in my little 73 Volkswagen yellow Beetle. Before they get in the car, don't you get in the car and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I apply the blood over them. I cast every demonic spirit that's trying to attach to men's public school today. And they get in the car, and I'm telling you, we'd have a better day. Come on, moms and dads, you need to start doing that. When they walk, when they come, when they come off that school bus or you pick them up the school, you stop right there before they even get in the car. You set the atmosphere. Don't you let any demonic spirit, don't you let their attitudes and their atmosphere to set your day. Can I get an amen on that one? And the same principle. Go to your job. Before you get to your job, one, one person told me just, just recently, they went to the job, they stop at the door, and they said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray over my job today. It's going to be a good day. I apply the blood of Jesus. And go into that job and, 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 and realize that you set the atmosphere. Don't let your work make set the atmosphere for you. You ever went to work? I, I'm just talking to you, Mama. You ever went to work and, and, and somebody on that job always messed up your day? I hear the yes and the amens. Amen. But you set the atmosphere. This is real stuff. And I began to share with you last week, and I'm just going to headline the, 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 the 12 goals that we've we should pursue no spiritual hindrances an atmosphere of the heavens being opened sometimes we let our circumstances what I just talked about dictate our mood no business as usual services an, un, an atmosphere of unified expectancy just like we feel this morning it was I prayed this morning I posted I don't know if you everybody's getting my text if you haven't been getting that if you'll get with me I'll give you the number how you can get my one time text I send out every Sunday morning but I said come with expectancy amen we come with expectancy today we, we should be coming together with an excitement and believing for great things to happen and I'll share this with you real quickly. It says, if, you, if I announced to you that Jesus was going to appear in bodily form at your church, next church service, no doubt the atmosphere around the church would be a lot different. Am I right? I like this. Loved ones would be physically dragged to, through the doors. So we need to come to church every time the doors are open expecting Jesus to show up in our midst. Amen. And also the third thing was, the, was an atmosphere of the supernatural. Our God is no common, ordinary God. You don't have to rub His belly. Amen? And you don't have to run around and pray with the beads. You don't have to pray to Allah, look into the east. You can just look up to the heavens and say, thank you, Father. I'm your child. I'm your child. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I need you today. 
Hallelujah. It works every time. Your faith works every time. No limitations allowed to be placed on anyone. What that would refer to an atmosphere of anyone can receive. And we talked about that. There's no respect to persons. That when we come to the house of God, we believe that everybody is going to receive, regardless of who they are, are. The socioeconomic levels, the race, color, or creed. It doesn't matter. And we should accept them and be ready to do that. And fifthly, an atmosphere of people are important because Jesus shed his blood for all people. Because, see, the church is an open door to all. Amen? Not a private club. I've been in situations in years past in churches that where there was seemed like a private club. You couldn't let nobody in. Somebody new come in. Who do they think they are? Pastor's going to let them do that? I've been here for five years and I haven't got to do anything. Well, maybe it's because you ain't got the right spirit. Oh, did I say that? I want you to have this, what, what Caleb said. Caleb said, we can do this. He said to Joshua, he said, we can do this. We can possess the land. And God says, because of that, that's the kind of spirit. We need to have the Caleb spirit, the right kind of spirit to reach the people and have that kind of spirit every day of our life. Then number six was no defeatist spirit. What does that mean, Pastor? God is able to deliver anyone he wants to. I'm not defeated. Say, I'm not defeated. I'm victorious. And when we come with an understanding to the house of God that you're victorious, you will make it. 2 Timothy 4.18 The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and preserve me until his heavenly kingdom and to whom be glory forever and forever. And he says, Amen. The word Amen says that's the way it is. And seventhly, no hold fort philosophy here. What does that mean, Pastor? We need to reach our city. Wachula is our Jerusalem. And this is where we start. It is our duty to evangelize the city. That doesn't mean we just take our four here and we just, just work with these four. And we, we do. We want to do that. We want to disciple. We want to help. We want to teach them. But also, too, we continue to reach out in the community. Amen? Because the Lord is moving in a mighty ways all around the globe, showing His power and love and magnificent displays of affection. Atmosphere of blessing. This is where I picked up for today. I'm going to only just to do a few and then I'll finish it tonight. So you've got to be here tonight. If you didn't hear last Sunday, go by and order a CD. But I, I want you to look in Deuteronomy chapter 8, 28, verse 8. It's going to be on the screen if you want to. An atmosphere, and, and how the Lord was speaking to us earlier, and how Sister Ty is bringing this decoration. Can I tell you what? That decoration is being tried. <laughs> the decoration of the Word of God is being tried. How many has been tried this week? I got in my truck the other morning, and uh, uh, and I was I had three several appointments I had that were in in uh, Highlands County and it was you know these cold nights well, we're going to have a good day well, it's already 75 degrees by the mid-morning you know what I'm saying and uh, Brother Terry and Sister Terry they're on a little vacation down to the Keys but for them Canadian folks that's uh, that's a heat wave you know what I'm saying so and so for the thing was I got in there turned my truck air conditioner on I heard something pop and smelled and my whole air conditioning system went out on my truck so it's been tried Brother Mike was out here last night. He'd been helping all day yesterday, and he tried to go home last night. His truck loved church so much, it spent the night in the parking lot. You will be tried. See, we must stop making excuses for our disobedience in these areas. How many want to be financially blessed? I'm talking about, now listen, I'm talking about the atmosphere. Set the atmosphere. Set this atmosphere for what God wants to do. And see, if we're not careful, we will put limits on God. And I don't want to put limits on God. I want to see you grow. I want to see you move forward. Because in these 12 goals that we should pursue, and this is number eight, an atmosphere of financial blessing. We must stop making excuses for our disobedience in these areas. Stop functioning in our dysfunction. Come on. Now, in the body of Christ, in the body, less than 25% of people in many churches faithfully support that church with tithes and offering on a consistent basis. 
Fewer than 25% serves the church with their time and talents. I'm talking about across the body. I thank God in this church we have a good percentage, larger percentage than that, that tithe and support in this church. And I thank you for that. The church serves a multifold purpose. Not only are we to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, but the church is here to help people. Amen? In order for the church to help people, the church has to have the resources to do so. See, but money is just one thing. Say one thing. See, your time, your talents go a long way in ministering to those who may be sick, and need someone to come in and cook for them or help clean up a little bit. Come on, are you hearing me? I like for somebody to cook a meal. And don't call and ask them because they're going to tell you no. I want somebody to cook a meal for Sam and Leona. I want you to cook a meal. You've done it before. I want you to cook it and just show up. Don't you call and ask them because they're going to tell you no, they don't want it. But we're going to do that for them. Amen? Listen. See, we as a church need to learn to voluntarily give the resources that the Lord God gives us. Our money, our time, our talents, our abilities, and our love for our fellow man. See, the church was established to be a blessing to those who have need of and what we are to have to offer. Out of that passage of Scripture in verse 8 of Deuteronomy 28, The Lord, say the Lord. The Lord shall command the blessing upon you in the storehouses and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless you in the land which the Lord hath given you. Now, let me tell you something, church. I believe with all my heart that that is a word to this church, and I've shared it many, many times. But as I was studying and reading for the day, refreshing this message, the Holy Spirit dropped that scripture into my spirit, and I want you to get it into your spirit today. If I don't go any further, I want you to hear this. He said, the Lord, I'm reading from the Amplified, he said, the Lord shall command the blessing. Upon you in your storehouse. See, when you give into your storehouse, the Lord's going to command a blessing upon you. Give into the storehouse, and God will bless you. And listen, and in all that you undertake, he, what he means there, everything you put your hand to, I will bless it. Hallelujah. Last night, and uh, there was 1,500, uh, uh, close to 1,500 booklets. How many saw those given out? Did y'all see him giving them out last night? Sister Debbie, they was helping on there. 1,500 booklets were given out with, with, uh, with the gospel of Jesus Christ on the streets of Wachula. I said, we're going to get these things out. We got the labels and labeled every one of them on the back and put the church information. But see, the thing is, whatever, I said, and I prayed over him. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray every book that's given out and goes into somebody's home, they read it and receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Everything we do. He says he's going to bless everything. And he said he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God gives you. We are living in a blessed land. You are in a holy place. Come on. I don't say that in a very, I don't say that in, in, in any prideful way. But God's hand, God's holiness is upon this house. And let me tell you. Those beyond the walls, religious people and, and soothsayers have spoken negatively toward the, what the plan and the purpose of God. But if you will rise up and say, Father, I'm going to bring my time. I'm going to bring my resources. I'm going to put it in. And he can look from heaven and he can say, breathe a breath of a rhema word of resources like you've never seen. Hallelujah. There was a man who showed up in a church one Sunday. Down in South Florida. He showed up in the church. He was sitting back there. And he heard this service on, on missions. And he was dressed in a really rough o, uh, 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 a pair of overhauls. Didn't look too nice. But the next day he wanted to come by and speak with the pastor. And he took the pastor out to lunch. And he said to him. He said, I heard your heart about missions and about the work of the Lord. And he says, here's what I want to do. He said, you shared with the church in the missions conference that there was fixed and take. You, you owed $325,000 on your educational bill. Here's the check to pay that off. 
He says, how much you owe on the church? He said, because that's fixing to go in for He said, how much you owe on the He said, I'm going to pay the church off. And he said, I'm going to give you two years. And he said, how much does it cost you to have a staff every year? $70,000 a year. He said, I'm going to give you $70,000 a year to take care of the staff. And he said, on top of that, in the next two years, then we're going to start letting you just pay the interest only. And the thing is, at a lower price where you could handle it. See, that was somebody that come in and in the presence of God, God sent them by. But see, sometime we all are sitting here sometime wondering, well, God, when are you going to send somebody? No, he's already sent you. Mm -hmm. Come on. So the storehouse is your place that where you have a commanded blessing. Ninthly, ninth, ninth uh, goal of, that we should pursue in the atmosphere of changing our atmosphere. An atmosphere of communion where the voice of God can be heard clearly. And I'm going to close with this and I'll pick up the rest tonight. And the atmosphere of communion where the voice of God can be heard clearly. There was an atmosphere, and I'm telling you, you could hear God clearly this morning. I heard Him speaking those things of healing. I believe we're going to get reports. I've seen some begin to, to move their bodies and believing for healing. Amen? But see, if we don't get that atmosphere change in our minds, in our hearts, in our spirit, things may not happen. He says here, it says, it is sad but true. We've not, uh, uh, have, we have a lot of, of church without ever he hearing from God at all. There are people that go to church and they don't ever hear from God. I want you, I won't ever forget it. It rings in my ears and I can remember the place and the, about the date and the time that the Lord spoke to me. He said, I want you to go back to the people I sent you to and I want you to build a place for my presence where I can speak to my people. He loved us. See, yet there in a fresh outpouring of His Spirit today. See, He's speaking to those who have an ear to hear what He is saying. What he's saying to the church today. Have we grown so confident that we don't need to hear from the Lord in our time? Have we gotten so good that we have no need for his wisdom and grace? Have we become so righteous that we have no need to hear from the creator of the universe? Have we reached to a place in our culture that God only needs to speak to those people? Oh, come on. We went through that in this nation. We went through that in this community. Oh, I got to get to there because they're going to give me a word. I got to get to this meeting because they know what they're saying. Can I tell you one child of God? Oh, listen, there's multitudes and multitudes that drives right by this church to go to another city to church. And all they need to do is stop and commit to the work of God right here in their own city. Because you, as a people of God, we hear the Lord. You hear God. Heaven forbid us not listen to Him. But we need to hear the voice of the Lord. We need to cry out for, for a word from our Almighty God. We need to develop a hunger and a desire. We need to yearn for His visitation. I yearn for His visitation. Sometime you may see me said, I just want to hear, Lord, what are you saying for the people today? What are you saying? Because see, when the atmosphere is set in your worship, when the atmosphere is set in your praise, I want to hear what God wants to speak to you, but also I want Him to speak to you personally. Oh, Shanda, my Messiah. We should be seeking Him in every crack and crevice every corner every nook and cranny of our lives we should seek communion with him every day in every way and should mourn when we are not in that place can you say amen will you stand with me this morning I hope you've let him get into some crannies in your life I hope you've let him get into some cracks that you've got hid. What about some of those nooks that you've got stuck away? Have you let him in? Have you let him pass the hurts in your life? Have you let him commune with you this morning? I don't know about you, but I feel that presence of the Lord in this house. Begin to sing your song again. I want you this morning, I, and, and I, know, I know the time is there, but I, I want you to really get a hold of this. 
And listen, if you wasn't here last week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, get to CD. Listen, catch up with all these. Because the Lord is saying right now, this is the time. Because see, the next few weeks, we're going to be getting into Christmas services and Christmas messages and Christmas programs. And, and you know, by the way, our little Christmas program will be on the, I think it's on the 17th. The 23rd is going to be our Christmas Day celebration. But I want you to know that God wants you just to love Him. He just wants you to love Him. My heart's desire is to see more men like you, Ron, come to God. My heart's desire, out of hell, is to see you to reach in to men's lives and bring them to the house of God. We'll go get them. If you'll go visit them, I'll send the bus. If I had to pay the gas bill out of my pocket, I'll send that bus. We'll go get them. Lord, I want to see young people like you in the house of God. So Sarah, I want to see your families restored to capacity. Hallelujah. Junior, this is why we're here. You're why we're here. You are why we're here. And that, all those folks that you invited on Harvest Sunday, maybe they all haven't just come back yet, but they know where they're supposed to be. But you know what? One day when we get to heaven together, you're going to have some crown. You're going to have some stones in your crown. Just be faithful. Just be faithful. Sister Lois, you served the Lord in this city a long time. Preach the word on the street corners. And say, Lord, send your power. He's not through with you yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If we could only get the vision of his atmosphere that he wants to set over our city. Over the last two years, I've had the opportunity, and the Lord has given me the, the, the uh, platform to go to the city councils and the county commissioners, and the, the door's already open. I'm going to, in the next, probably in the next month or two, I'm going to go and pray with the county commission, and the Lord's already told me what to tell them, and they need it right now. I had a platform with the city council just about a few months ago, or whenever it was, when they had the big city change council. Walked into that city council room. They called me and said, Pastor, will you come and pray? The Holy Spirit began to deal with me. Walked in that room and I said, before I pray, can I say a few words? I said, listen, I'm a son of this city. I am a son of this county. But also I'm a man of God and pastor of this city. And I must speak some words over you. The striving has to stop because the Word of God says where there's any striving, any evil spirit can operate. I said, there's things that are trying to come into this county, that, into this city that wants to operate. And I said, if there's striving amongst you and amongst the leadership, it can affect and it can come. But if there's unity, even in the leaderships, in our cities, in our governments, that's the reason why the church has to be active in the community. Because if you're not careful, the atmosphere can change. Oh, there's some wants to have a strip like Del Mabry in Tampa. Come on, are you hearing me? It was confirmed to me, and I know that. I'm not just saying that to you. But you change the atmosphere. But see, we've got to keep our focus, but also you've got to pray for us and leaderships and that we have the platforms to get into these and speak the word. That's the reason why the enemies want to try to shut me out and run me off. But you know what? He's not going to. You get hold of what God is saying. Keep the atmosphere in tune. Keep the atmosphere charged. And how you do that is when you worship. Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day. You have touched your people once again with your glorious power. Lord, if there's one here today that wants to know you, that does not know you, Lord, I pray right now that they will accept you as their personal Savior. 
Lord, I pray for those in this room right now that are struggling with the walks with life. Maybe they're in the wrong relationship. Maybe they need to get a relationship in the right path and get on the right way of living. And that is righteousness. And Lord, I'm thanking you, Lord, for this day. In Jesus' name. If there's no one, if there's someone who wants to come and let us pray with them for anything at all, I want to open this time. The Holy Spirit's ministered to you this morning in a very special way. But I want to give you opportunity. We'll come into a prayer of agreement. In Jesus' name. Come help me, Mike. Thank you, Jesus. Cedra, would you come out? Lord, we thank you, Lord. Stretch forth your hand to Adiel right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We, Lord, we lift up this young man to you. Oh, Father God. Lord, you saved him. You set him free. Father God, I pray for supernatural strength over his mind, over his body, and over his spirit. Devil, you're a liar. He will, and he will be strong. He will go further. We cover him with the blood of Jesus today, right now, Father. God, I cover him, Lord, right now. I pray, God, as he goes in and out of his work, Lord, and those that he is to work with, Lord, that may not live like he wants to live and desires to live, Lord. I pray you'll give him a supernatural covering. I pray you'll give him supernatural strength. I pray, God, that you'll give him supernatural care in this time and season in his life. And we proclaim this to be done in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Tell him this. this he is a child of God. And God's got his back. And we're praying for you. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Isn't God good? Find somebody today and love them in Jesus' name. Be back tonight. Come on, be back tonight. We'll finish the series, but be about the Father's business today in Jesus' name. God bless you.